Hi, and welcome back to Climate Unboxed. Now, what we want to discuss in this video is a task that arises very commonly when we're dealing with noisy data. What we want to do is show you how you can smooth this data to take out the high frequency oscillations and work out underlying trends and changes. So let's take this example of a temperature series lying right behind me. What we want to do is calculate a smooth mean such as in this example now where we have a running mean of a nine day window. Great, it looks easy at first. So how does this actually work? Well, let's take some artificial data to make things a little bit clearer. So on the x-axis, we have time, and on the y-axis, we have our variable in question, which in my previous example was temperature, but it can be any variable you wish. Now, what we're going to do in our simple example here is we have a running mean of a three-day window. It means that we look at the first three points, we simply average them, and then we have our smoothed value here, which is centered in the middle of the window in terms of its timestamp. Then we move on to the next three points until we come to the last three points. But what happens next? Now when we want to move to the last point of the series, we have a problem because there are no longer three data points in the raw series and CDO can't average them with a three step window. We have in the original series here, six data points, but using a running mean of three steps or three days, we basically have a smooth series, which is shorter. It's missing a point in the first time step and it's missing a point in the last time step. Now in a previous video, I showed how you could set the timestamp when you are taking a monthly mean or an annual mean. By default, the timestamp associated with the mean value was the middle of the window. But if you remember, we could have the end of the window, just as we see here, by telling CDO to lag its calculation. And if you remember, the option was double hyphen timestamp underscore date, and then we had a space when we said last. And likewise, we also saw that we could actually have the time associated at the beginning of the window by using timestamp date first. So if we go back to our series here, I showed you before, and we reapply that running mean. Now, if you look very closely at the start and the end of the series, there are missing points. Now, this is gonna be a problem because what we want to do with this smooth series often is we want to subtract it from the original in order to get a normally about the moving mean or the moving average. And if we go to the terminal now, we'll see what actually happens. So in this directory, I have a file T2M, which is simply a time series of temperature data, two meter, from a high latitude point. In fact, this is at 80 degrees north. If I blow it up, there is a strong annual cycle, but there's also a upward trend. Now look what happens if I, first of all, take a running mean and then try and find the anomaly around that mean. So I'm going to take, this is monthly data. I'm going to say CDO, run mean comma 48 and so I have the input and the output which I'm going to call run mean so I've made this running mean if I look at the two files and have a look at the data then we say CDO show date t2m the dates run up to the end of 2021 and they start from the start of January 1959 if I do the same command, CDO show date for run mean, now if you recall, we have a centered difference. So we expect the timestamp to be in the middle of the 48 month window. And we find, if I scroll up, for example, remember the original series started in 1959 January. If you look, the first month of the series is the 16th of December 1960. So that's basically two years into the series. It's the midpoint of the window of the 48 month time steps. And the same at the end, we can see that the, the series before ran to the end of 2021, and now it finishes in 2019 with a stamp of the middle of November. 
Now, what happens if we want to calculate the anomaly? Well, we can simply subtract this mean from the original series, but look what happens if I do this. I do CDO sub T to M, and then the running mean, so I want to subtract that, and let's just call this anomaly and see what happens. Now, we have a warning. So it says sub filling up stream two run mean by copying all time steps. And then we have a warning, stream two has more steps than stream one. So remember the running mean has fewer points, but it's giving us an answer. This is one of those instances in life where it's best not to ignore a warning. There are warnings that we can safely ignore. And there are warnings like uh, beware of steep cliff. It's a good idea not to ignore those warnings. And this is one of those cases where it's best not to ignore. Let me show you what's happened. If I open anom.mc, and what have we got at the end of the series? We can see the anomaly bouncing around because this is the monthly data and we're taking off a four year mean. So we still have the seasonal cycle. The zero line is here, but look what's happened at the end of the series. Suddenly we've got a discrete jump up. The series is discontinuous and, and suddenly we've got a positive anomaly in the last four years, which of course is 48 months. So what's going on there? So to understand what's going on here, we need to think back to how broadcasting works in CDO. Now, if we have two series and we subtract them using sub, the first and second series are subtracted and CDO doesn't care about the timestamps. So in the case I have illustrated here, where we have a shorter series, which is the run mean subtracted from the original series, CDO doesn't match up the timestamps. It simply takes the first step of the run mean and the first step of the series. So essentially, CDO sees both series starting at the same time point, even though that's not the relevant timestamp. Okay, so that's just a shift of one time step. But what happens when CDO gets to that fifth point in this series here? There's nothing left from the run mean to subtract, there's only four points compared to the six in the original series. So what does CDO do? Remember, it does broadcasting where it says, okay, let's just repeat the shorter series. So essentially, it takes those first two points and it duplicates them towards the end of the series like this. And that's the reason why. In the example I just showed, when we had a 48 month mean, then we ended up with four years worth of data jumping up discreetly at the end, simply because we were subtracting the first four years running mean from the last four years of the original data set. So let's now see how we can resolve this. Now there are two ways of doing this. The first is to simply, when we have a running mean, and in this case here I'm taking a lagged running mean, and we can do this also for a centered or a leading running mean, what we can simply do is chop off those first two data points from the original series before we make the difference. That's fine, but if the running mean is calculated over a long window, we could end up throwing away a lot of data. But there's another way, and that is to extend the original series before the start by duplicating it so that the running mean will actually have the same length. Let me illustrate this with an example. So in this series here, if we look at those first three steps, step one, two, and three, because we're taking a running mean of three, what we want to do is take the second and third steps and select them and cut them into a separate file. And so the command there is cell time steps two stroke three. So in this case, two is always used because we want to start from the second step and the three refers to the run mean length of windows. So if we have 48 uh, month running mean, then we want to take two forward slash 48. Now what we want to do is shift that in time. So the command there is shift time. So in this case, we have daily data and we have a running mean window of three. So we want to shift back those two points three days into the past. So we have shift time minus three days. So of course the three will depend on the running mean window length. The days depends on the frequency of the data that you're working with. And then we simply need to merge these two files together. So for that I'm using CDO merge time and I'm taking the two steps which have been shifted. So the file name there was step 23S 
and I'm taking the original series and I'm putting them together and I use the output file name of, you can't see it, let me just fade myself away, longer.nc and I'll just bring myself back. Okay. So once we've got that longer series, now when we do the running mean, hey presto, something magical happens because when we look at those first three steps, we're averaging step two, step three, and step one, and we're using a lagged running mean. So the lagged running mean will put a point there, which is the average of step one, two, and three. Two, three, and one is the same. Then when we shift to the next set of three points, now we have step three, one, and two, so we get the same answer. So we can see that the first three points of the running mean output will be always the same value. We have a, a window of three, so we have steps two, three, and one, then steps three, one, and two, and then steps one, two, and three. But the key thing is that the output now has the same length as the original input data set so that we can do the difference between the two. So what we're going to do is look at that example again from earlier. But now what we want to do is cut off the first 49 months and paste them onto the start such that when we run the running mean, we don't have those missing months at the start at the end. I'm going to take the simple example where we have a lagged window. Now, last time we had a 48 month running mean that actually gave us the midpoint on the 16th of the month. So um, to avoid that, I'm actually going to take an odd number window of 49. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that temperature series and I want to cut out those first 49 steps, but apart from the very first step. So the command is cell time step comma. Remember, we need to cut from the second step to make sure the window is complete. And we have a forward slash and we go to 49. Now we're cutting this from T2M. Now we could just have an output file and then have a second command where we need to shift this backwards in time, remember? Such that when we take the running mean, we're constantly averaging over the same 49 steps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pipe this. So rather than putting an output file, we can use a hyphen and then that command combination, the command function plus the input file is then input to the next function, which we'll move to the left here. And that is going to be shift time. How much do we need to shift by? We need to shift, remember, by the uh, size of the running mean window. So we have minus 49 months. And we want to paste this onto the start, but I will put this into a separate file for the moment just so we can have a look at the dates. So I'm going to call it start. And if I do, well, let's do CDO show date start.nc. And the dates are running to the end of 1958. Remember, the original series starts from 1st of January 1959. So let's just paste those together now using merge time. So we have start.nc and then t2m.nc. And then I'm going to call this t2m underscore full. If I look at the dates here, show date t2m underscore four, then now we should have monthly data starting from 1955. But remember that those first four years are not really data from 55. They're just a repetition of the 59 to 63 data. We, all we need to do is apply the running mean now with the same window size to the original series. So I'm going to say minus minus time stat date last uh, file and we take the input file t2m underscore full. I forgot the command again, run mean with a window size of 49 and I'm going to call this now run mean. Now let's do CDO show date with run mean. It's the same end date but if we scroll up it also has the same start date, 1959. Now it's got basically this cycled window. So if we open up this new series, run mean or NC, so NC view, run mean, what do we expect to see? We expect to see the, the line to be completely flat in the first four years, which is exactly what's happened. So the first four years are completely flat because Basically, we've taken those first 49 months and we're just changing the order, but when we do a run mean, we're doing the average over the same 49 values. But now we can do CDO sub 
and we can take off the anomaly from the original series, T to M, and run mean, and we can get the anomaly around the running mean, and we no longer have a warning. There's no warning in place. And critically, if you remember, we're not having the problem now where the series is running out of data points and then CDO, not knowing what to do, wants to broadcast and it just cycles back to the start of the running mean. So we're no longer having the first months pasted on the end of the series and subtracted from the original signal at the end of the series. So we're not subtracting 1950 data from 2021, which is what was happening before and gave us a discrete step up and these errors. So that concludes today's lesson on running means. So I hope you can see how the function is extremely simple to use to do a very quick smoothing of data and work out the anomaly around a long-term mean. I look forward to seeing you again very soon on Climate Unboxed. Yeah, I know, because I'm trying to look at the things, yeah. Let me try and finish that. Well, I like to be a bit dynamic, no?